Hey everybody, John here, and today we're going to be going on a tutorial about Fruity Loops Parametric EQ2, one of my favorite EQs out there. So this one's got seven bands, and under each band you have a lot of different options to choose from. So on the first one, you right-click it, and you got the reset option, which is pretty handy. You know, if you do a move like that and you don't really like it, and you don't want to try to find the default setting or what frequency you were at, you can just right-click that and reset that. Also, you right click it and under the type you can change all the different types of filters that you want to add to your EQ. So let's say for this one, usually it's going to be a high pass. And if you switch to this and you see this big peak, you're like, hey, what is this resonance peak? I don't, I don't like that. Come down here to the bandwidth, you can hold alt and you select it and it resets that back down to normal. And then you can kind of drag and however much you want to cut off. So right click that and let's reset that and let's change the type to let's say a low pass basically the same thing just the opposite usually you want to have this here on the right but for demonstration purposes I'm just showing you you can change different types here so let's put this back to peaking to have it all kind of straight out if you right click again this is a really cool feature that I like so let's go back to the high path and you right click and you go to order you can change the steepness of this curve if you want this a little bit more steep let's say max steepness is 8 so it cuts off quite a bit it doesn't really relax it as much so you're not really limited in that sense. And then the gentle ones are basically the same, but just like it says, it's a little bit softer, it's a little bit gentle, it's not such a harsh cutoff. So another one is under key. This is, I think, really cool. You know, let's say you have some song and you want to find out where, for example, the A's are. And here it tells you all the A's with also with a frequency, the exact frequency each one is on for all the notes and all the keys. It's pretty, pretty cool. I don't think I've really ever seen an EQ that has that feature on it. So let's right click this and let's go back to peaking. And for demonstration purposes, I set up just a quick little pattern here that you can listen to. So here I got a bass. So let's play this and check this out. This is one of the coolest things. So I'm playing this bass and you're able to see the actual frequency, the spectrum behind your EQ. So you can kind of see where the sound is coming in from. And the darker or the lighter those lights, lights are, it, it, it's basically showing you that's a higher amplitude of that signal. So over here, it's kind of a little bit darker. And maybe this kind of area you don't really want to hear. So let's grab this guy, kind of maybe pull some of that down. And you're like, okay, maybe around here I see some of these vertical lines and it might sound kind of good. So let's kind of emphasize that a little bit. And you kind of, you kind of push this up and kind of play around with it. So let me stop that. So, so that's really cool, cool features. That lets you also to visually see it and also hear what you're actually doing in, as far as changing stuff. So you can kind of, if you use this for a while, I feel like you can kind of get an idea as long as you kind of remember where the frequency is about and you kind of see it. After a while, you're going to kind of remember where the certain frequencies are when you hear stuff and you don't have visual feedback from it. So let's reset these back down to zero and let's go over some other options. So here at the top, it also shows the range. So C1, C2, C3, C4, and, and so forth. And also kind of a description of where most of those frequencies lay. So you got the subs, where you get your, like your low hits, or your booms, 808, stuff like that. You get your bass, low mids, mids, high mids, PRS, probably presence, and treble. So it's kind of also a good visualization of where things are going to sit in your mix. Also down here at the bottom, it's kind of a little hard to see, but you guys also got a little uh, some knobs down here. So this first little playhead, if you click this, this lock spare state, I'll come back to that. But first, this high precision monitor. So let's check this here, and you'll see this check is now highlighted. Now this high precision monitor only corresponds to the visual feedback, not the actual output. It takes a, it. You sacrifice a little bit of latency, but as you can see, the lines are a little bit more defined. So you, I, I personally don't really use that feature that much because I don't. It just. I don't need it that precise for most of my purposes, but it's cool to have it there. You can go to the legacy monitor, which kind of makes it a little bit more blurry. Either way, it still has the same feedback, kind of really preference at that point, I think. I think just how it is default, default is great. So also on this monitor tab, what's really cool is you can monitor right here at the top left. You can always see like what's going on. So this is currently selected. So you're monitoring the output of this EQ. So you're listening to the changes that you're making. If you go here, that you're going to be monitoring just the input, and then here the monitor is going to be off, and you're not going to see any visual feedback if you have that off. So you might want to have this kind of always here, unless you're maybe want to check something on the input, but 
usually on the output there is kind of where it usually usually sits so if you're like you know what I don't like these tokens I don't care about them I don't care about those menus they're not for me I, I'll just want to use some sliders then just don't even look at them just have them just hidden from this little button down here let's move on did I go over here yeah we went over to that oh yeah there's also the about if you want to read about it so it's always nice to do this compare thing is also pretty cool too so let's say for example I have this blank EQ set up and I'm just making some just moves just randomly I'm not really actually actively trying to EQ this bass at the moment so let's have this here and we're like okay I like this curve that I have going on here I'm going to save this so you click this little down arrow and you click that so now, now that's saved now let's make some different changes and kind of mess around with it and mess some stuff up this is really weird EQ but this is just kind of I just kind of want to show you what it does so you have this here and you're like hmm I like this but you know I maybe the other one was a little bit better you can click this button down here and swap between the two so that's kind of cool but remember that also is still saved so if you're saving a preset just keep in mind that that will still be there it's kind of cool to change them but I find you might forget I don't know just keep track of it is all I'm really trying to say so let's reset these over here right and then over here on the right hand side you have volume control for each one and this right here is as, as you notice is a whole it's a master basically it pushes everything up so if you hit alt and you click it it'll reset back to its default value volume sliders up and down it's pretty self-explanatory and down here you have the actual knobs to change the frequency so let's say let's put these back to default by holding alt and this first one right here let's bring this up so we know what we're messing with now down here you'll see this purple it looks purple to me this purple slider here and as, as, as you change it up it's gonna it's kind of sweep through the frequencies there so that's that knob here and once you learn these two that it's all the same for the ones down here bandwidth this is gonna choose if you want it maybe a little bit tighter Q some say bandwidth some say Q BW or Q it it's, that does the same thing but increases kind of makes it narrow if there's like some nasty frequency like let's say for example this little area right here is just nasty right so let's kind of go over here kind of find it is this the one that we don't really like yeah I don't like that right here so let's pull that down and you can kind of see how it's really really tight and it kind of takes it out right there so that's kind of how that works there um, also here at the top you can change these settings so if you don't want to right click and you know go down to type and ch change the type like that you can say this purple one I want to just click this and scroll up and it'll change through all the different variations of it Let's see is there anything else I have not covered on here I think that's the basics of it and if you guys like I can maybe make a tutorial of how I would EQ something rather than just showing you the functions of of this EQ because it's one thing to know what all the knobs do but then it's something entirely different to know how to use those knobs and when to use them and so forth so thank you very much for watching this video have a good day